In today's train vlog, we're going to have a look at the live train results from our GS versus MS statistical arbitrage. And then I'm going to share a new strategy with you that I've been working on this week. Uh, it is Toyota versus Volkswagen, and I'm going to share the back test and the analysis in my Jupyter notebook. So let's get started. This is the spread chart between Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. And let me share with you one of the recent uh, trades that our train bot opened. So as you know, the strategy logic is that whenever the blue line or the spread crosses above our upper band, that is a signal to sell the spread. So let me mark that here. So we did enter a short spread position uh, on that date. And then our uh, target is to exit at the current simple moving average so this trade was prof for us and then we're going to show you the exact trade result on the spreadsheet and now we actually have an open position so you see that the spread crossed below this lower band here so this uh, was a signal to go along the spread and now we are hoping to exit the position at the average again unfortunately the spread did fall quite a bit but this also allowed us to reinforce a position for a better price. So we also entered uh, a small position at this level here. And we are again trying to target the exit at the simple moving average. Here you can find our current open trades on our Interactive Brokers account. So you can see that we have funded the account with 25,000 euro. And here you can see the individual positions. So we are currently long 30 stocks on Goldman Sachs and short 150 stocks on Morgan Stanley. Uh, we see that the individual position value is about 22,000 US dollars. And if we sum up the individual PLs uh, of both positions, uh, we see that the unrealized uh, loss at the moment is minus 147 euro. But hopefully uh, we might still close this position of profit, but uh, we will see as time will show. In this statement, you can find the realized PL on Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. And this is the trade setup that we have closed last week on Thursday on the 28th of August. So on Goldman Sachs, uh, we closed uh, that position in a loss of minus 2.81 US dollars, but we made 58.01 US dollars on Morgan Stanley. So the overall profit uh, of those two positions is 55.2 US dollars and I'll keep you up to date uh, about the strategy and we'll see how it will perform over the course of this year. Now that we have reviewed our recent live trades let's now proceed to uh, showing you a new strategy. So uh, this week I was uh, analyzing uh, Toyota versus Volkswagen so I was thinking yeah why not try to you know have a look at the car making sector and Toyota and Volkswagen showed very good results. And I got, I got some feedback from you guys from the last video that you would like to go deeper into uh, checking for co-integration, right? So in this video, I'm going to show an example how to perform a co-integration test in Jupyter Notebook and then uh, evaluate whether the time series or the spread that we get from co-integrating is stationary or not. And after that, uh, we're just going to proceed with running some back tests and see if we can create a profit strategy between these two stocks. So here's my statistical arbitrage analysis between Toyota Motors and Volkswagen AG. So let's now import the packages in Python. And here I have a ready CSV file with the historical prices on Toyota and Volkswagen. So, um, now, what we need to compute is the ratio between the two stocks. You see that Toyota is approximately twice the amount of Volkswagen stock. And to compute that, we can use something called linear regression. So we can approximate the price of stock A, in our case Toyota, by taking the ratio times price of stock B, in our case Volkswagen, and the, the residual amount would be the spread. So now uh, let's plot the Toyota prices on the x-axis and the Volkswagen prices on the y-axis. And you see um, a clear trend that as the Toyota prices increase, 
so does the Volkswagen prices. And the slope of this red line here, which is our regression line, the slope of this is basically our ratio. And to get the slope, we can use stats models and use their linear model uh, class. And from this class, we can then use the OLS algorithm to get the linear regression. So the slope of this red line here is uh, 1.85. So now if we want to compute the spread between uh, Toyota and Volkswagen, so our spread is basically, as you can see here, uh, price of uh, Toyota minus the price of Volkswagen times the ratio. And then we can adjust the price of Volkswagen. So we take the uh, Volkswagen price and we multiply it by the ratio. And if you want to now check the data with the adjusted prices, we see that the prices of Toyota and Volkswagen are adjusted such that uh, they sort of look the same. And now we compute the spread. We see that uh, the spread between the two prices are now uh, anchored to zero. So this is a very nice chart to see because what we see here is some stationary pattern. So we see that sometimes the spread is below zero, sometimes above, but it does oscillate sideways in a very stationary manner. And now that we're talking about stationarity, we can also now apply something called a co-integration test. And you've asked me in the last video to implement a test. In this case, I'm going to show you an example of the augmented Dickey Fuller test. So visually, we see that this time series is stationary because it basically just moves sideways. And by, defin by definition, a stationary time series is basically just a time series where the mean and the variance remain constant over time. So to perform an ADF test, we can again use stats models and we can import the AD Fuller function. And uh, so this function, what it is, is basically, it is a statistical test where it is evaluating a certain time series and then we'll just output whether the series is likely stationary or not. So here we have our test stationarity function where we input our time series. In our case, we would input the spread chart uh, or the spread data. And then we have to define uh, the limit or where we want to accept uh, whether the series station or not. So uh, if we accept a value of 0 0.1, basically we want, in a statistical sense, we want to have a 90% accuracy that our series is stationary. So there is some mathematics behind it, and I am not a mathematician myself. So we're actually just going to apply this AD flow function and see what values we receive. So as you can see, uh, we receive an ADF statistic, which is minus 3.28. And generally, the more negative this statistic is, the more likely it is that our, stationary, our series is stationary. And we have our p-value of 0 0.015. So this p-value is a percentage statistic. So usually, uh, if you look at some of the tutorials online, they will tell you that if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then there is a high chance that our series is stationary. And here we see the critical values. So basically, our ADF statistic is between 1 and 5% because it is uh, more than minus 3.4 but less than minus 2.86. So generally, if it's below 5%, uh, we can uh, consider uh, this spread to be stationary, in which case uh, it is. Right, so uh, now let's proceed to our uh, backtesting part. So you guys already know how it works. So we will compute Bollinger Bands. And in this case, I've added a multi period backtest where I'm using uh, the period 8, 40, and 200 on the hourly time frame. Uh, and I will then show you three backtest results on three technical indicators. So uh, in this case, I'm just computing these Bollinger Bands for each individual, individual period. And now in the on bar function, I'm just specifying the train logic. So when the spread is below the lower band, we buy. When the spread is above the upper band, we sell. 
And then for the exit strategy, we exit when the spread is around the mean or the SMA. So let's run this. Uh, here we have a quick function to analyze the backtest and provide us with some uh, backtest statistics. And then in this period, uh, I mean in this cell, we are then initializing our backtester class. And here we can see that we are setting the commission to minus 0 0.6. So by putting all the numbers here into our backtester and running this, uh, we are generating three backtests for each individual time frame. So here we see our backtest for gsms.darp8. Uh, so just a quick example, what you can find here is that this backtest, for example, uh, was performed over uh, the period of 412 days. We generated 83 trades, out of which 56 were profitable. And on average, we made 319 US dollars profit and a minus 439 US dollar loss. So then we have also the backtest for the uh, period 200 and period 40. Uh, but instead of looking at the individual trades in a, uh, in, a, in a table here, let's look at the visualized trades on a chart. Right here. So here we can see the three periods being visualized. So out of the three backtests, the, um, the 40 period backtest performed the best. But it is a very good sign to see that all our periods are action profit. So if we generate a profit on multiple time frames, that is a good sign that the strategy overall is profitable regardless of the time frame. So uh, we can also visualize the backtest using uh, this bt.visualize backtest. So this is our spread chart. And here the green lines represent the profitable trades and the red line represents losing trades. So we can see that uh, you know, overall the backtest results look very good. And uh, overall, I'm very happy with the results uh, of, of the statistic arbitrage. So there are a few things to consider. And uh, so, for example, Toyota Motors is traded on the American Stock Exchange, so the prices are quoted in US dollars, whereas Volkswagen is quoted on the Europe European Stock Exchange, so the prices is quoted in Euro. So there is some exchange rate risk that we have to consider. Uh, so this is for simplicity, simplicity reasons not included in this backtest, but I will include that when I'm going to test this strategy live. And also, when I look at the backtest, I see this uh, very aggressive candle here. So we see that during the market open, we see that the spread increased very rapidly. So maybe I would filter out this trade as this might, you know, uh, not look very good in the backtest. And this would require, you know, some more in-depth analysis of this trade. But overall, uh, the results are still pretty good. And I will update you guys when the live strategy is done so we can add this to our portfolio. All right, so this is it for today's video and I hope that you've enjoyed it. So in the meantime, I will keep trading the GS versus MS strategy. And I will also try to you know, add the Toyota versus Volkswagen into our trading portfolio. So you can expect that in the near future, we will trading two strategies, which was GS versus MS and then Toyota versus Volkswagen and I also have some other strategies lined up but I will save them for another trading block and also if you're interested in the Jupyter Notebook you can check out uh, my website where you can download the file and I will add a link in the description below so thank you very much for watching and see you in the next trading block